Hi there, guys. This is 14K, and we're going to extend the chi-squared test to a goodness of fit test. So this is pretty nice, actually. This is a good extension. Um, and again, not all courses will do this. Often you'll just do the test for independence with a, a two-way table. But there's some occasions where you want to check whether or not your distribution fits what you expect it to fit. So here we go. Here's, here's, let's look at the example to see what we're talking about here. So it says, Marius works in a fish, fish shop. Uh, one week he measures 250 fish before selling them. His results are in the table below. So here we go. Here's his results. Kind of looks a bit like a normal distribution. Uh, Marius is told that the length of the fish should be modeled by a normal distribution with a mean of 19 and a standard deviation of 3. So that's the underlying population that we're expecting it to fit. So we've got lots of data here, um, which we want to check against the normal distribution. So we want to check this distribution against another distribution, um, and we're going to do it via a goodness of fit test. So we're going to see, we're going to get out the expected answers again from the normal distribution for these for the, the 19 centimeters and the standard deviation of three, which obviously you need to be told beforehand. Um, and these um, measurements here as well. So we're going to get a profile of expected values here. And like with the goodness, like with the chi-squared test for independence, we'll then consider the amount of degrees of freedom here. And now in this case, uh, degrees of freedom will simply be uh, the number of bits of information that you have take away one. Again, it's like saying um, if you have a total, if you have your totals here, how many bits of information do you need in order to, to complete the table? So, for example, if I took away 10 and we knew the total, we'd still be able to work out what 10 was. So in this case, the number of degrees of freedom would be what have we got seven here, take away one, which is six. Okay, so it's just n take away one with degrees of freedom here. Okay, um, but we have another problem because we have the same issue again in that if we find that our expected values are below five, then we're going to need to combine um, certain categories, certain rows. Okay, just the internet just uh, went down there. Okay, so um, I think we're pretty much ready to do this test. Uh, we need to find our normal distribution values that we expect. And then we're going to put in the information into a calculator in a set of tables. So we're going to put in the, the observed values and the expected values in a sheet, a spreadsheet essentially into our, into our calculator. And then we're going to do this goodness of fit, fit test. Okay, let's just check what they say at the start as well. They say... Uh, you, the unit for the uniform and normal distributions we're doing this at the moment they say uh, these types of tests are called goodness of fits they are measuring how closely the observed data fits with the expected data for a particular distribution okay so potentially we could do this for a binomial distribution or um, a Poisson distribution as well okay then it says the test for independence using contingency tables is an example of a goodness of fit test you can use the test for um, goodness of fit with any distribution. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Okay, in chi-square goodness of fit test, the degrees of freedom, which are calling V here, um, equals N minus 1. Right, okay, so let's get on with the question. Let's just get rid of that. And so to start off with, the question says, write down uh, Marcus's, Marius's, Null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is that his results follow the normal distribution. Um, that follow the normal distribution with, you can say that we've got here that X is, if X has been mentioned, it hasn't, but we can call it X. X, the fish, follow this distribution, which is a normal distribution with a mean of nine centimeters and a standard deviation of three, so a variance of three squared. So uh, the null hypothesis is that 
the information follows this distribution. So we're not just saying about the mean being 19, we're also saying that the standard deviation is three. So we're not just testing for the mean, um, which we were testing for before when we were doing um, a, a Z test. Okay, so we're testing for both of those things. And of course, the alternative hypothesis is that it follows a different distribution. This is not the distribution that it follows. Uh, let's check that with the book to see what they're saying on that one as well. I'm interested to see that. So, um, so X is normally distributed with a mean of 19 and a standard deviation of three. Yeah, it's both of those things in this case. And H1 is that it's not normally distributed with these things. So it's one or the other. Okay, so then in part B, it says find the probability that the fish is less than 12 centimeters long. Okay, so we're now saying what's the probability? Uh, the probability that X, if you like, is less than 12 is what they're calling the length of the fish here. So the X is less than 12. As lowercase x as they're doing here, it's the probability that X is less than 12. And for that, when we do it on our calculator, um, we can say we don't need to stop at zero. Now, obviously, you can't get a fish length which is less than zero, but we're just looking to say what's the probability of getting everything which is less than 12. Otherwise, you'll have a, prob a problem. And your problem is that you, you could have the problem where your probabilities don't add up to one. So when you find your expected frequencies, they won't add up to the same number as your total of 250. You know, if your expected frequencies add up to, to, to 0 0.9, for example, then when you times each of your expected frequencies by 250, then you'll get 90% of 250 in total. Okay, um, small point really. So we're gonna do normal CDF. Um, so probability, so scratch pad, probability, and we're gonna go to distributions, and we're gonna do a normal CDF, and the lower bound is negative infinity or whatever they've already got in the calculator. And the upper bound in this case is 12. Uh, mu is 19, sigma is three, standard deviation is three, and we can see we're getting an answer of um, nearly 1%, 0 0.009815. So the answer to A, 0 0.0, 09815 and so on. Obviously, you'll give that to three significant figures after you've given the, the full answer. Okay, so this is your answer here. Okay, so part B says, find the probability, uh, part C says, hence find the expected number of fish whose length is less than 12 centimeters. So for that, we just need to say that probability, which is nearly 1%, of all of the fish. So of times times by 250, which is 2.45 fish. Okay, you want to keep your decimal places for your answer here so that we can use them in the table later on. But your probability can go in. Just going a little odd. There we go. So probability goes in there, and then your expected frequency will go in here. So it's 2.45. And you really want to keep a little bit more accuracy than that. So you can keep your accuracy or you can store these things on your calculator, of course. OK, now, obviously, we have an issue here in that we have an expected value which is less than five. So we're going to need to combine two rows. And the obvious thing to do here, of course, is to combine the first and the second row. I think we're going to have the same issue on the other end as well. OK, uh, so it says the table below shows the expected values of and um, so there are some expected values here. Let's just let's move me up here just for a brief moment. Let's just get rid of the annotations. And let's look further down. So there we go. So they've done part of the table for you. You can use Scratchpad to find your three missing probabilities there. Not a problem. OK. Uh, right, so then it says find the missing values. So the other missing values, we're going to do them in the same way as doing B and C. And then once we've done that, find uh, perform the chi-squared goodness of fit test, writing down the degrees of freedom which are used. Okay, so to sort of skip ahead a little bit here, um, these two values 
will need to be combined. And so will these two categories here as well, so will these two probabilities, although the probabilities you won't need to give to your calculator. And this, these two will need to be combined here as well, so those expected frequencies. Now, what you're going to give to your calculator is the observed values from the original table and the expected frequencies. And now we're going to have one, two, three, four, five rows. So degrees of freedom are going to be four. So there we go. We've sorted out writing down the degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom are one less than the number of rows which we're going to use. OK, right. So let's then skip ahead a little bit here. And this is the table which you should come up with. So. Again, I've skipped a little bit there because I didn't work out my other two rows which were missing. But there's the combined rows for part E. So now I'm going to go into the calculator and I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to add spreadsheets and I'm going to put in the 27, the 71, the 88, 52 and 12 in column A. I'm not going to put in the length of the fish, that's not necessary. So I'm putting in the observed frequencies into A and the expected frequencies I'm putting into the next column. So I'm going to put in 22.75. Don't know why they've given that one to four significant figures and the others to three. Not sure why they've done that, but let's go with what they've got. 69.6, 94.5, 94.5. So we're using three significant figures here. I'd prefer to use more. Okay, so 51.2 and 11.9. Okay, and now we're going to perform this chi-squared test. So I'm going to go to menu and statistics and stats tests. And now chi-squared goodness of fit test. My observed list is in A. My expected list is in B, so I'm putting B and then followed by the square brackets. My degrees of, of freedom in this case are three. No, they're not. They're four. They're four. They're five take away one. So degrees of freedom is four. Um, I'm going with C square brackets for the first result column. I don't want to shade my p-value. I'm going to go with OK. And there we go. You can see that on the TI Inspire, Somewhere there, you can see my values there. Okay, so I'm getting a, a chi-squared value of 1.28, and I'm getting a p-value of 0 0.68864. So let's have a little look. Not that. Let's. Uh, we've got it here. So we've got here 1.28 is the chi-squared value. Now they gave us the critical value already for, for this one, which was 9.488. So since we're lower than the critical value, again, we don't have a significantly different uh, distribution here. So hence not significant, so no reason to reject the null hypothesis. And we also have a p-value, so we could do the p-value approach as well. And seeing as we're trying to do this at a 5% level, um, if, we'd, if we had a p-value of underneath 5%, we would again accept the alternative hypothesis but clearly, we're nowhere near that in this case. It's probably this is probably the, the like the best example of the normal distribution that you with those parameters that you could have hoped for. Okay, almost. Okay, so there we go. That's the test which is done. I think that is done. Let's have a look to see if there's anything extra in the book. Okay. Right, I think that's done. You can have a go at the examples in the book as well. I think they mentioned the uniform distribution there at the bottom. Um, I think, you know, for a uniform distribution, you should be expecting the same. You could do exactly the same thing. You know, if, if you're expecting here for all these values to be the same, then, um, you know, if, if you've got the same probability per, per 1 for x, then you can quite easily come up with your expected values for those categories as well. Okay, right. So next one, 
Next exercise is Poisson and binomial distributions. Again, I think we're talking about doing a goodness of fit test with a Poisson distribution and a binomial distribution. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks for listening. I'll get on with the next one.